Hello everyone. Now let's see the shorter job first with Java. First, let's see how it works. Then we will see the code. I'll explain the code step by step. So, shortest job first. Let's say we have the arrival time, have arrival time and burst time. So let's say we have four process. Um, the first one with arrival time zero and one, two, two three. Each it has its own burst time. So let's see the the Gantt chart. Um, the shortest job first. How it works? The shortest job first. The process which arrives first and has minimum burst time. It will be scheduled first. So, but this one is non-preemptive. So when we schedule a process, we should execute it till it is complete. Okay. So. We have the process one, its, uh, it's arrival time is zero, which means we have only one process arrival. And it has four, four units of burst time. So we will schedule um, P1 first till its completion. So we have four, it will be complete at four, right? Then at time four, at time four, we have all processes arrive. We have one, we have P2, P3, P4 arrive it because now we are um, at time four and we have all process arrived. So with shortest job first, we will schedule the process with, with minimum burst time. So which one has minimum burst time? P3, right? It's one. So we will schedule P3, or I mean P4, P4. Then after that, we have these two. We will schedule this one, which is P3 and P2. So the P1, its completion time was four. P4, it has one unit of burst time. So it will be four plus one, five. Then we have P3 with two. Five plus two equals seven. And then we have process two with three unit of burst time. So three, seven plus three equals 10. Now let's see the, com we saw the completion time. Now we will compute turnaround time and waiting time. The turnaround time is equal to completion time minus arrival time. The process one, it's turnaround time is equal to completion time minus arrival time. So four minus zero, four. 10 minus 1, 9, and so on. For the waiting time, it is equal to turnaround time. We compute the turnaround time minus burst time. Turn around for the process one, turnaround time is 4 minus 4 is equal to 0, and so on. Now let's see the code. Let's see the code. So first, I am getting the number of processes. For example, here we have four process, so we will enter four. Um, these are my variable process ID. This one is used to show the gun chart, arrival time, burst time, completion time, turn round time, and waiting time. I'm using this variable, this array, which is called F. Let's use it for the so here we have P1, here we have P1. When it's complete, I will mark it with true, which means the P1 is completed. Whenever a process completes, I will mark it as um, F, F with true, which means it is completed, don't check it, okay? Now I have this for loop to get the arrival time. Now the main part is here. A while true, we have um, another thing we have st, which is start time. So, for example, if our arrival time was one, this one, two, three, four, which means we will start not from zero. Here we have zero, we will not start from zero, we will start from one. So, the starting time will be from one, but here it's it's starting from zero. So this start time is for that. We have the we have this variable to know if we are finished. So we can break from break, break out from this while loop. Okay. So we have C equal to N. 
c is equal to n and we have the minimum equal to 999 we will know later what are the what are these variables so if total total was zero right if the total is equal to n n is the number of process n is the number of process if it equal to n we will break which means we are finished now if the total was the total is zero first time right so it's not equal to n n is the number of process if it's not equal to n we will check we will check the arrival time which process is arrived and it has least burst time so we will check for these two and it is not completed we said we have f if process complete we will mark it with true which means it's um it's complete so we will check for the arrival time arrival time is this less than starting time so let's say our start time is zero and the arrival time is also zero that's correct we'll check then for the for the completion of the process if it's completed will will be one if it's not completed will be zero um i mean i said we will mark it with true but we will mark it with one okay if the process complete we will mark it with true with um one it's the same um and we will check burst time the process the first process let's say we don't have these for arrival we have only one so the first process if it was 4 10 20 any number will be minimum which will be the least burst time because we have the only one arrived first time okay that's why i'm checking if it was less than 99 you can make it bigger because the first process arrived is always the minimum okay now minimum of value is equal to as i said first process but the second time let's say we have this process arrived which is also equal to zero let's say it's zero but it, it has a um, burst time of three so the first time minimum will be four because of this but let's say this is also zero we have three here so the second time we will check for burst time of the second process is less than minimum minimum was four because here we have we make it equal to first process is it is it less than yes it is three right it's three so the minimum is equal to the process current process the process with least burst time then we will check this check is for what if what if we have we didn't have any process arrived with at time zero okay if we didn't have any 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 process at starting time zero we we should increase the start time of the system we should increase the start time once we have c c we will make it with let's say we have only one process arrived and it has any burst time so we will mark it with the first one the first process i is equal to zero let's say we have three process arrived at time zero and one is equal to one its burst time is equal to one and the other is two and the other is three which we which one will take according to this check we will take the least one which is equal to one but let's say that process was the first process so our c will be equal to zero okay now let's compute the completion time completion time of the current process which is which was zero will be starting time plus burst time so our start time is zero plus burst time is four so it will be four and the we will increase the start time by burst time so after the process one the start time now it's four okay the turnaround time is equal to completion time minus arrival time as i said the waiting time is equal to turnaround time minus burst time and we will mark the the process equal to one because it's completed the process id is equal to 
C plus one. For example, we have the process zero, which is equal, which is process one, right? Because our four, it's starting from one, from zero, plus it with one. So we know the ID of the process. And we will increase the, the dot by one. So if, the, if this variable TOT was equal to four, which means we have completed, we have checked for all processes. We have four processes. Each time we increase, each time we increase, it will be four, right? So this, the another time which we check the total is equal to zero, we will break from this while. When we break from this while, we, which it means we are finished. Now we will print the arrival time, completion time, and waiting time. Then we will check for the average time. Average time is equal to, here we are, here we are computing the total, the total of waiting time and the total time of turnaround time. Um, divided by the number of process, we will get the average waiting time and average turnaround time. Okay. Now let's see the code, the result. Let's say we have four processes. Zero with four. One with three. Two with two. And three with one. So we have the the Gantt chart is P1, P1, four, three, two. One, four, three, two. And the list is Completion time four ten seven five four ten seven five with total with turnaround time four nine five two four nine five two and the waiting time. If you have any question, please ask me in the comment. If this video wasn't clear, I can make another one. So if you have any question, you can ask me in the comment below. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video.